Arlington Stadium in Arlington, Texas. The New York Yankees meet the Texas Rangers. Pitching for Texas tonight, Nolan Ryan. And on the mound for the Yankees, Scott Kamenicki. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to an evening of Yankees baseball tonight. The Yankees and the Texas Rangers move into game two of their series. The Yankees were come from behind winners last night, taking the first game from Texas nine to six. I'm Dwayne Stats. Nice to have you with us, and we hope you enjoy the evening of Yankee baseball we have in store. With that victory last night, the Yankees got back to the 500 mark in the American League's Eastern Division. And as we take a look at the standings, they're running eight and a half back of Toronto. Baltimore and Milwaukee also ahead of the Yankees in the Eastern Division standings of the American League. And as I'm joined by Tony Kubek, Tony, as we uh, remember back, well, almost a year to the day, the Yankees were right at that 500 mark, I think maybe a game under a year ago today. Well, Tartable's bat is certainly starting to help a little bit more now. Mattingly driving the ball better in the fourth spot sure has helped. Inner defense is considerably better than last year. I think two key guys really have been Charlie Hayes at third and Andy Stankowitz at short, both ways, offensively and defensively. And I think most people feel that this ball club is, without question, a better ball club than the one a year ago. It's a better ball club with the exception of the starting pitching again. And, of course, with Steve Howe gone, nobody knows for how long. Steve fired down right now. The bullpen is kind of out of whack right at this point. So they're going to need better starting pitching. And perhaps giving Hilligus a couple of starts, he may be on trial. and They may move some of the kids up if they don't uh, re uh, take advantage of it. Yeah, the Yankees have made some changes on the roster as Steve Farr goes to the disabled list. As you mentioned, Sean Hilligus will get a start. A matter of fact, he'll get at least two. Kurt Young will be with the ball club tonight and Jeff Johnson goes to the bullpen for the Yankees for the foreseeable future. Tonight Scott Kamenicki's on the mound. Tony he does not have a win in his last eight starts. I don't know if there's any consolation in this but the fellow he's pitching against tonight Nolan Ryan went 11 starts without a win. Well, Nolan Ryan has got to be a challenge for Kamenick, even though he doesn't have to bat him. I think for Kamenick, in, in any sport, when things are going wrong, you go back to the basics. I think it's time for Scott Kamenick to get back to the sinker ball, one kind of curve, and to change it. Not try and change speeds and throw two or three different kinds of curves. Not mess around with three kinds of fastball. I think he should get three pitches down, build on them, and add as he goes along. But you can't master that many when you're a young pitcher. Scott Kamenicki matched against Nolan Ryan tonight. We'll be back with all the action on the 4th of July following this. New York Yankees baseball is brought to you by... Budweiser, the king of beers with that clean, crisp, cold taste, nothing beats a bud. Bye. Nobody Beats the Wiz Home Entertainment Center. For everything in home electronics, music, and movies, nobody beats the Wiz. By your Tri-State Jeep and Eagle dealers. There's only one Jeep, and it's only at your Tri-State Jeep and Eagle dealer. And by AT&T, proud sponsor of the 1992 U.S. Olympic team. It is a warm evening in Arlington, Texas, as the Yankees and the Rangers move into the second game of their series. The Yankees winners last night, and in this season series, they are even against the Rangers in Arlington, two and two, but overall a game under against the Rangers. They have won three and dropped four against Texas this year. 92 degrees at Arlington Stadium. It has been a breezy day, although that breeze is a bit warm. Watching them take batting practice, Tony, the ball was sailing out of here. Well, we saw Roberto Kelly last night, and several of the other outfielders really having trouble judging fly balls. If you hit the ball relatively deep in the alleys of the center field, it carries, but it seemed like right behind second base, the balls were getting held up, so the winding is very, it's, it's swirling a lot. The 4th of July, kind of a magic number in, uh, in a lot of ways in the annals of baseball. Teams hoping to be in first place by the 4th of July, feeling that positions them, historically anyway, for a run at, if not, a division title and ultimately a pennant. Well, it turns out to be that way more than half the time, but certainly no guarantee. As we watch Nolan Ryan, the 45-year-old right-hander, trot to the mound for the Texas Rangers. We have a full house to see. The Yankees and the Rangers go at it tonight, and Nolan Ryan on the mound for the Texas Ball Club. It's one of those days, not just because it's the 4th of July, but because who knows how long Nolan Ryland's going to be around. You just want to enjoy every time he goes out there. Remember that shortened start against the Yankees when he injured something. Look at the 
knee kick. Tommy Ellis, the pitching coach, talking about this knee kick. He did not start the season with that high knee kick, but since he has been doing it, he's getting the ball up there 95 miles an hour a time. And, of course, he's got a great curveball. And his numbers recently have been pretty good. He had trouble staying healthy and then had a couple subpar outings coming off the shelf. But recently he's pitched well, and the Rangers know that they're going to need him if they're going to make any kind of move in the Western Division of the American League in the second half. They have a rough way to go. They're going to spend a good part of the second half on the road. Look at how he prepares. Nolan Ryan is checking to see if there are any wet spots in case he has to feel the ground ball in front of the mound. He's checking everything out. He is very thorough. Here's a quick look at the 7-11 starting lineup for the Yankees. Andy Stankiewicz leading off, followed by Mel Hall and Roberto Kelly. Don Mattingly fourth again. Tarnable in right. Kevin Moss, the DH, with Noakes, Hayes, and Gallego rounding out the lineup for Buck Showalter. And the defensive setup for Texas behind Ryan tonight. And boy, that has been troublesome. The kit catcher Rodriguez throws very well, but that outfield's made 21 errors. They hurt themselves in that area. This game is underway. Andy Stankiewicz looks one on the right side foul. And the first baseman, Rafael Palmero, is there to make the catch. You know, you were talking about Nolan Ryan and how important it is to this ball club. And the bullpen has been in shambles except for uh, Russell, their closer. But if that Nolan Ryan can give them a good second half, this team is only four and a half games back the, uh, behind Oakland and the Minnesota Twins. And with him pitching and he could lead this staff, and maybe stay in contention all year because yeah. they're going to score runs. They're going to need that because they spend a good part of the second half on the road. As a matter of fact, 40 of their last 68 games will be on the road this year. Here's Mel Hall. And he takes one wide, ball one. And Texas, over the past few years, the Rangers have had a tough time in the late stages of the season. They have not been traditionally a good second half team. Two balls, no strikes to count. And a couple of the teams they're going to have to battle in the West, Oakland and Minnesota right now, tied for first ahead of Texas. Two teams that have shown in the past they can surge and play well during the second half. This heat may wear them down a little bit, but I think more than that, they just don't have depth over the last few years in their starting pitching staff. That looked like a changeup that he just threw Mal. His changeup is in the high 80s. And you can see how effective it is because, as you pointed out, Tony, with that kick, he has been in the mid-90s, still at the age of 45. And with that great breaking ball. He does it again. And the count is 2-2, so he's had Hall out in front twice. Take a look at this pitch. Hall's reaction. Well, when you're looking 90-plus fastball, you can see what the great motion of Ryan and the movement, tailing away, change of speeds. A little close. So the count is full, three and two. Nolan Ryan has written a book with his pitching coach, Tom House, and it was Tom House who, in studying tapes and using a lot of computerized data with stick figures, found out that Nolan Ryan's head was going down to meet his knee. And he had no velocity, and basically said when he stands straighter up and takes the knee and kicks it up and almost touches his chin, it was his proper technique. But then again, from from all that aggressiveness with kicking the front leg, he had a little injury down there, mm -hmm. too, from it. They had to devise a new training program for him. Full count on Mel Hall. One out, base is empty. We have just started. Hall hits That's the umpire. dirt, and this one got Dale Scott. Wow. Scott is hit by that pitch. And he is limping badly. They have protection all over the shin guards, a little metal plate on the top of the foot. Mel Hall skips rope. Rodriguez can't get even any part of the glove on it, and that hit. Dale Scott as solid as it could. Now he's going to try to walk that off. Hmm. Well, Hall escaped being hit, as you can see. But not the plate umpire, Dale Scott. Scott right now is 
thinking why was it my turn to work the plate tonight. He was at first base last night. We'll see just the end of this pitch as it skips by Hall. Beneath Rodriguez met. And it gets Dale Scott. So Danny Wheat, the Rangers trainer, took care of Scott. It's going to be the most comfortable day to be on home plate anyway. Mm -hmm. So Mel Hall, who had three hits last night, is aboard here in the first with Roberto Kelly stepping in. Kelly at 290. Ball one. Seven home runs, 43 runs batted in for the Yankee center fielder. Doesn't seem fair on some of those pitches. Ooh. A couple of change-ups to Hall, and then this pitch to Roberto Kelly. Look at uh, Rodriguez with that great glove hand battling that last pitch. And a popper on the right side. Palmero at first handles this one. You know, on the center field sense, uh, fence right now, the sun is glaring. There's some Bad white board. shirts out there on this very warm day, and the sun is flickering off the center field. So that is the background. Look at that little bright spot right on the lower fence, the and all there. those yep. white shirted fans out there trying to hit Nolan Ryan coming out of that. Mm -hmm. Well, this place seats 43,500 and change, and they have said that it was a sellout coming into this series. Don Mattingly. Up to 280 now. And the pitch is too low, ball one. So Nolan Ryan on the first pitch to Matty, an off speed pitch, politicking with Dale Scott, the home plate umpire. He wants the pitch in that area. Gave him a little stare. <laughs> Mattingly lifts it into center. Ball will hang up and drift on Gonzalez a little bit to his right, but he makes the catch. And that retires the side. For the Yankees in the first, no runs, a walk, and a man left. Bottom of the first coming, no score. The Yanks remain in Texas to battle Julio Franco and the Rangers after scorecard tomorrow at 8 here on MSG Network. In Arlington, Texas, bottom of the first inning coming. The Yankees did not score in their first, left a man on, and sends Scott Kamenicki to the hill, making his 12th start, one and five, with an earned run average of better than four and a half. His first start in June against Detroit was not good. His last start in June was not very good. His three middle starts, even though he picked up two losses and no decision, were really not that bad. He kept the Yankees in those ball games and showed a little bit better control. And here's the lineup he'll face tonight. Brought to you by 7-Eleven. Franco leading off. He's the DH. Followed by Dean Palmer, who's been primarily out of the second spot. Almero third. Ruben Sierra in right hitting cleanup. Followed by Gonzalez and Reimer. Rodriguez the catcher. Dickie Thon at shortstop hitting eighth. And Jeff Houston, the number nine hitter at second base. There's the Yankee defense for tonight's contest. Which one of those will represent the Yankees? In the All-Star game in San Diego, Charlie Hayes hasn't done badly. Stankowitz, Hall, or will it be Melito Perez? You know, you can make a, a good case for Hayes and Hall because of the run production. Make a good case for Roberto Kelly, mm -hmm. even Mattingly in a way, although... be interesting to see who winds up in San Diego along with Yankee manager Buck Showalter. Here's Julio Franco and he takes the first pitch too close ball one. And that could be an indication of how much the Yankees have improved this year. Last year at this time you start looking for people to send to the All-Star game. It was difficult to find somebody. Scott Sanderson was playing well. Now you look at the strike. You're not having overpowering years but four or five guys have chances. 
Doug Showalter selected to be one of the coaches, first Yankee manager since Ralph Houck was selected as a coach on the All Star squad. There's a strike to Franco, a little breaking ball that dropped over. Franco starting in a little bit. One of the primary principal things wrong with the Rangers' offense has been his unavailability. He's been injured so much the last couple of days, he seems to be swinging the bat a lot better. Some line drives getting out the right field off his bat. He's still a pretty good breaking ball off speed hitter. And this one too close. So the count stands at two and two. He has a couple of home runs, including the one last night, and both his home runs have been off Yankee pitching. If Franco has to run, you will see how badly his knee still bothers him. Oh my. Very wow. close. And Dale Scott says it's ball three, full count. Take a look at this pitch again. You know, Noakes was set up outside, the ball drifted inside. It, I guess it passed through the strike zone too high and maybe inside. Yeah. And a bouncer to short. Stankowitz will handle this one. So an easy play for Andy Stankowitz. You really could make a great case for Stankowitz, although it would be unusual. His whole story has been unusual and a great one. You could make a case for Andy. The job he's done at short and in the leadoff spot. You know, the Ripken's there and uh, Travel, of course, been injured a good part of the year with that broken foot. Uh, Fryman's done a good job and has got some good offensive numbers. But I would think that a Tom Kelly, uh, Greg Gagne, Oh, possibility yeah. of being a His free man, agent sure. and having been kind of an anchor in the middle of that, you know, that infield for him with two world championship teams, Gagney may be the guy to go. Dean Palmer is bouncing foul into the Yankee dugout, runs the count to nothing and two. Look out down there. Melito Perez sitting, got a win last night, and that drove Mike Stanley to a new position on the bench. Two strikes the count on Palmer, who for one reason or another has taken to the number two spot. He is normally speaking not the ideal number two man but he has hit well out of that spot of foul ball. Noakes could not hang on for the foul tip strikeout. You don't see too many managers put a power hitter like this kid in the number two spot especially a guy that strikes out this much but the rest of their lineup has so much power after him. And. Bobby Valentine's hopes he will cut his swing down in that spot and maybe strike out a little bit less. He fouls this one to the right side. Well, since he's gone into that second spot, he's hit over 300, just under 250 for the year overall. And you saw just a moment ago that he leads the majors in strikeouts. There's Palmero, maybe showing some signs of coming around, but he's been in a mystifying slump in terms of his average. Palmer is out on strikes. So Kamenicki picks up his first strike out of the night. Scott Kamenicki needs no other curveball than this one right here. Left or right end hitters. That one that goes straight down. Third, same speed. He doesn't have to throw it harder. And again, if he can retain the feel of that pitch and not change the release point, he's got a chance to wipe this team out because they love to sit on fastballs with a couple of exceptions. Palmero's average is up to 251. And boy, that seems strange. People are saying say he's, he's trying to pull the ball too yeah. much and uh, he did that in 89 I believe when they first got him and Davey Lopes really had a lot to do with straighten him out got him in straight away where he had like 15 doubles to left center field that year. Now he seems to be in that 4 3 run top hand to try and pull it's a ground ball a second one strike to count on him for well, the last time we were here he was talking about the fact that he was out in front of everything acknowledged that knew it to put it into practice was difficult for him to do and it's strange when you've seen Palmero hit the way he has the last few years. He went around could not check says Chuck Merriweather down a third and the count is a ball and two strikes. Palmero wound up last year with 88 runs batted in and as far as RBIs he's just about on the same pace as he was a year ago. He has 40 runs batted in but the average well off. Mattingly is going to handle this one unassisted. And it's a 1 2 3 first for Scott Kamenicki against Texas. At the end of one from Arlington, no score. Danny Tartable leads off the second inning against Nolan Ryan and takes on a little close right there, ball one. 
a familiar Nolan Ryan pattern. Pitches inside more effectively than any right-handed pitcher in baseball. It's conveniently wild at times. Carnival one out of 17 lifetime against Nolan Ryan with eight strikeouts. This one is too low. A two ball no strike count. I remember once when Sandy Koufax was pitching Dick Groat said hitting against him was like going to the dentist. <laughs> Getting whip canal surgery. <laughs> Boy. And you get the feeling that facing Ryan could be the same way. Well he has three quality pitches. I mean the fastball no longer is recorded at 100 as it once was on more than one occasion but it's still got great movement terrific curveball and he's come up with a great change. Count goes to 2 2. And I think the point you made about Ryan being conveniently wild is one that has been valid for quite a few years early in his career and down through the middle he did have a control problem. But if you look at his numbers over the past few years Ryan has actually been a very good control pitcher and has been that way well, dating back to the time when he went to Houston. About the mid 80s. He has 5,577 career strikeouts that leads all pitchers and 2,700 and now 16 bases on ball. But he strikes out Tardival. That's a major league high also the base on ball team. You know his and most of those came in his early years. He had one year when he walked over 200 men. That's the year he struck out over 300 with the Angels when he struck out 341 in 1977. Look at the impact into Rodriguez the young catcher's glove is a strong young man. You can see how he's trying to crest the ball and kind of gather it and still some late movement sometimes is still pounding his hand pretty hard. Kevin Moss lifts one high and foul out of play down the right side. You know, just checking his numbers, Tony, since the strikeout of Tartable. Look at Rodriguez. I mean, usually you try and hold that ball out in the corners. This kind of pulls his glove out of the strike zone. He's gone eight years, Nolan Ryan, walking less than 100 men. And in five of those eight years, he's thrown well over 200 pitches. Now, prior to 84, he consistently walked at least 100, and as we mentioned a couple of times, over 200 men in one particular season. He changes speeds on Moss, so the count is a ball and two strikes. So, at the later stages of his career, he really has become more of a pitcher, and control has been a much bigger factor in the success that he's had. A ball two strikes the count to Moss. And Rodriguez will have to throw him out. Second consecutive strikeout in the inning. How's that for a hook? Mm. There's no question that Nolan Ryan, he is the first to say it, genetically was gifted with a great body and a great arm. Some players charitably say he's, he's kind of a freak. But I think what he has really done, his work ethic and his drive and his desire to keep going at age 45 is really what's kept him on top. And he starts notes with a breaking ball for a call strike. So he's establishing that curveball early. So quite a few change-ups already. Seen the change-up. Yep. Quickly in front of Notes. Ryan's in command here in the second. And even in the prime of Nolan's career, and you saw him down at Houston. You were, you were broadcasting there. Sometimes you take him to the third inning until he really start gaining the velocity. Mm -hmm. And there are times when in the ninth inning he would maintain, and you know still be up in the high 90s with certain pitches. Ahead of Noakes, nothing in two. And he strikes him out. Ryan strikes out the side. Well, that was a clinic right there by the veteran right-hander. 
Bottom of the second coming. No score from Texas. New York Yankees baseball is brought to you in part by Wagner, maker of quality power painters, power sprayers, and power washers. We're through an inning and a half in Arlington, Texas. Ruben Sierra leads off the Ranger half against Scott Kamenicki. This is wide ball one boy Ryan in the top half of this inning is perfect with his complete arsenal Tony. And Sierra is out in front of this one so Kamenicki changes speeds on him. The count is one and one. Yeah, Ryan got probable with a fastball, Moss with a curveball, and Milk with a straight change. Off the plate in. It's two and one. So it'll be an interesting offseason. This free agent list is, lists are now being looked over by some of the general managers in baseball. There's going to be some big names possibly on that list. Sierra takes one the other way. Hall cuts it off on one hop. And Sierra, who had his nine game hitting streak come to an end last night, singles his first time up tonight. Good play by Mal Hall, holding him to a single. I don't know if that was supposed to be a sinker ball or if he threw a changeup upstairs, but that is not where you want to pitch many people on this team because they like the ball up and out over the plate. Is that an unusual setup position with that front leg going well behind the back leg? Contrast that with Paul Molitor, who doesn't stride at all. That was the negative stride, and look at Sierra's. Now Juan Gonzalez. And it's high, ball one. He really tore up the first part of June. Boy, 18 home runs for the year. Pretty happy. 11 home runs in yeah, June. Yeah, like, it, like, like They were like in the first three Most weeks of, of June yeah. also. He's playing with a little bit of a tender hamstring right now. Missed a couple ball games. Sierra back in at first. And Gonzalez with those 18 home runs has just one in his last 11 games. Runner at first with nobody out. Ball two, two and oh. Take a look at the Mizuno home run leaderboard. McGuire 27, Deer 21, and Gonzalez Canseco, who's on the shelf, and Tettleton each have 18. Rob Deer, I think he still does have more home runs than he does singles. <laughs> Isn't that freakish? Yep. Kamenicki behind in the count to Gonzalez. There goes Sierra, and the pitch is a strike. The throw is not in time. Sierra steals his eighth base of the year. He is 8 of 11 running. Kamenicki can have the high knee kick. Lopes goes down and gets a sinker ball. And Gonzalez up, hitting fifth with a little tender hamstring. Try and start a little activity. That's what Bobby Valentine's trying to do, and he just steals it as much on Kamenicki as it did on Matt Noakes. I think more on Kamenicki that time. So the Rangers have a man in scoring position off the steal. And Gonzalez out in front. So we're seeing the effectiveness of changing speeds from both pitchers here in the first couple of innings. Which once those pitches are established and Kamenicki's doing a good job too, it makes a guy like Gonzalez very vulnerable, high and tight, out of the strike zone. He will go after bad pitches. He'll try and protect down and away. A 2-2 count on the Texas center fielder. Kamenicki retired the Rangers. One, two, three in the first. Piece of that one foul. Scott Kamenicki against the Rangers. 
Mark Connor, I'm sure, again, he did it with Jeff Johnson his last couple of starts. He's trying to get some of these pitchers less experienced than Scott Sanderson, even Melito Perez, to start a ball game and establish something. Some area in the strike zone where a certain pitch you can go to when you get in trouble. Rolling away with the sinker, the change of the curve. Blocked by Noakes. The count goes all the way to three and two on Gonzalez. This is the first time Kamenecki has faced Texas. So he might have a little bit of an advantage there, although all of these pitchers, as you know, are very well scouted. But still, that's not like actually seeing a pitcher for the first time. 3 2. And a fair ball down the left side. Extra bases for Gonzalez. Sierra will score to give Texas the lead. And Gonzalez will hold it second with a double. When you pitch deep in the count, and Kavanicki. When three and two, nobody out. He comes a little more to the center of the plate, perhaps even picks something off. 50th run bat at the end of the year for Gonzalez on his 11th double. Well, they've got a bunch of hitters in this lineup who love that high front leg kick, don't they? We showed you Sierra. Reimer does it. Houston does it. You just saw Gonzalez do it. Now Kamenicki forced to come in on 3-2. Touch for the double. Here's a dangerous hitter. Oh, for his last 14. But he is strong. Ball one high. I think after last outing, Kamenick, he had one little extra on the mound the last time out when he lost his composure when he didn't think he was getting pitches from the umpire, and perhaps he, he got another one before the game started. So I would think he will stay under control emotionally in this game. One ball, one strike. A game against the White Sox. He left trailing five to nothing. Made 96 pitches in less than four innings and was charged with five bases on balls as well as five runs on six hits. There's no question about Kamenicki's stuff. Fastball's pretty lively. He's ahead of Reimer one and two. It's a matter of making quality pitches. Against Baltimore before the White Sox outing. He left trailing four to two but pitched pretty well in that game. Eight innings charged Ultimately, with four runs, but threw the ball well. Troubled his last time against the White Sox. Two and two. Nobody out in the Texas second. Rangers have a run home. Gonzalez with a double drove home Sierra. Reimer waits. And he's out on strikes. He was out in front. So Kamenicki, who in the past has thrown a good changeup, has Reimer out in front here. Almost looked like a palm. You mm -hmm. see that shot from center field with those fingers fly up. And it's a pitch that. Jose Guzman last night, a real pure palm ball that he got a lot of his 12 strikeouts on. So he got a big strikeout there of Reimer. Here's Rodriguez. Devon Rodriguez, the young catcher batting 290. Too low with that breaking ball. What we've seen from Kamenicki tonight, you think the scouting report, something by Ron Hass, he says that they're a fastball hitting club. Mm -hmm. When you get behind or pitch deep, you end up having to give them fastballs anyway. Rodriguez sends one to deep center. Kelly back in front of the track for it, makes the catch. Gonzalez tags on his way to third and will make it standing up. So Rodriguez skies to center field for out number two. 
One ball, no strike. Fastball upstairs near the middle of the plate. Gonzalez wisely tags up, picks up a base, and a deep fly ball. Now Dickey Thon, the number eight hitter. The shortstop in the batter's box. It's too high, ball one. This is one part that you don't want to pitch upstairs very consistently. Straight away the ball flies. Not quite like Wrigley Field in the summer months where the wind's blowing out, but it can be close. Don had a hit last night in three official at bats. The count is one and one. His heat still 91 degrees. A little humidity in the air. The wind, which used to be a negative factor for the hitters until they put those high billboards all around. Now the ball swoops down and takes balls directly out towards center field. It creates a reverse current. Yeah. There's a strike. The count is a ball and two strikes. On eight out of his last 19. Those are the billboards of which you speak. Right above all those people, and you couldn't hit a ball out of here in center field unless you hit about 450, and then it would just barely make it. Now, as you said, what was the terminology? Reverse the wind currents? Yeah, reverse current here. Two balls, two strikes. It comes right over the top, and then right back out again. Well, you can stand around the batting cage in practice see the flags blowing straight in in center field and the wind will be at your back like pushing you toward the mm -hmm. pitcher's mound. Run home two outs two to the count and Thon takes it the other way that's a fair ball. Cardinal with the pickup Thon headed for two and he's going to make it. Gonzalez scores to make it two to nothing. And from the moment Thon made contact, he was thinking double on that liner toward the line and right. And once again, Scott Kamenicki just showing each hitter too many pitches. It's not three and two, it's two and two as it is to this. So they've seen his change up, his fastball, his curveball. He just hadn't gotten into the groove yet of getting ahead on the count with quality pitches and getting hitters out with three pitches sometimes, four at the most. Well, we have seen Gonzalez and Thon, and even the ball that Rodriguez hit to center. When Kamenicki catches too much of the plate, a solid contact made against him here in this inning. Houston fouls one back, strike one. Houston's average up to 265 on the strength of a six game hitting streak, and an average of over 340 for about three weeks now. He's healthy, feels good. He'd had a lot of nagging injuries before. It's that time of year where everybody starts thinking, boy, I can't wait for the three-day All-Star break to recover. Al Newman now into the utility infielders. A little jam show. Don is stealing third, and he's going to steal it without a play. Standing up. That's his 11th steal. He is 11 out of 12 running in the second stolen base of the inning against the Yankees. Kamenicki so intent on just throwing a strike and uh, he basically just disregards Dickey Thon at second base. One one to count. Houston down to first. Mattingly will make the play unassisted to retire the side but the Rangers come up with a couple of runs in the second inning on three hits. They leave one and at the end of two from Arlington Texas Yankees trail the Rangers here on the 4th of July two to nothing. Yankees are down by two we move into the third inning in Arlington Stadium. Charlie Hayes leads off against Nolan Ryan. And the pitch to Hayes of the strike. Ryan struck out the side. Tartable Moss and Noakes in the second inning. Now starts Hayes with a strike. One ball, one strike. Ryan lifetime against the Yankees, 12 and 8. 
He's allowed just one run and just nine singles over his last 16 innings now. And Charlie Hayes chases one way upstairs. One and two. It's just about a month ago that Ryan started against the Yankees. He had to leave early, and that's the game when Tommy Ellis' pitching coach told him that two days before his throwing day before that start, Nolan Ryan said, what is the fastest speed our speed cut has recorded anybody so far this year, April, May, and going into June? He said, 97. Nolan said, well, I think tomorrow I'll just week 97. Strike three call to Hayes. Charlie tried to lay off the pitch upstairs this time, and it's a strike. Caught that corner. I'll tell you what, Dale Scott is, if he starts giving those kinds of pitches to Nolan Ryan, it's going to be a long, long day. He'll hang in there tough. Yeah. Now Mike wow. Gallego, look hit, out. Hit him with a breaking ball. And it got Rodriguez on the deflection. See Gallego trying to duck out of the way of that breaking ball. I think sure did it, it get Scott? It got all three of them, maybe. Cut. It grazed the near the elbow or forearm, then it catches the mask, and then it got the chest protector. That's how hard this guy throws. Went through three people. <laughs> <laughs> Mike so, is saying, boy, am I lucky. A absolutely. Ball. Here's Andy Stankowitz. Look at that breaking ball over for a strike. Well, the Yankees have seen some heat from Ryan. They've seen the good curveball. And the changeup through the first nine hitters, and now Andy Stankowitz hitting for the second time in this game looks at a breaking ball to start this sequence. One ball, one strike. Ryan nope. with one complete game this year. He really still hasn't decided when he's, whether he's going to continue to pitch in the next year. He said he'll. You know, the old start taking one game at a time. If I feel good after this season, I may come back. That's too low. Two and one. For a while there, I thought he'd put a group together and go back to Houston by that ball club, Mr. McMullen. Mm -hmm. And at this point, with this Texas franchise, he has, I guess, what amounts to a personal services contract to be involved in the front office of this club beyond his playing days. The count now goes to two balls, two strikes on Stankowitz. Nolan Ryan is not really the toughest guy to steal on. You can see with that high leg kick from the stretch, but when you think of his catcher, he will make up for a lot of that if you try a running game. He's throwing out more than 50% of those who try to steal on him. Talking about Rodriguez. Two to the count. And Stankowitz works it all the way to three and two. It was Stankowitz and Mattingly, as we look at Hall on deck, who faced Ryan in the other outing he made against the Yankees when he made just those ten pitches and then left. And that slight strain of the left hamstring. There goes Gallego on a pitch hit on the ground off the glove of Palmer. That's going to be a base hit. Gallego. Made a big turn around second, but scrambles back into the bag, and the Yankees have two men on. The first hit of the ball game for the Yankees, and Andy Stankowitz picks it up off the glove of Dean Palmer. Terrific play by Palmer just to keep it in the infield with a runner going on three and two. You don't expect many hitters to pull Nolan Ryan's fastball, and you can see Dean Palmer is off the line, and with the fastball sign, he's probably leaning to his left, and he makes a nice play, preventing a second and third. And even at that, had the ball gone in the corner, Gallego possibly could have scored. So Palmer did save Nolan Ryan a couple of bases. Here's Mel Hall. Hall walked his first time. And it's too low. So after the strikeout of Hayes, Gallego hit by a pitch, and Stankowitz has a base hit. Paul's had a tough time 
through the years against Ryan. Bounces this one foul. The count is one and one. He's two out of 18 against him. One of those hits a home run. Talk to Bobby Valentine if you will have a pitch count on Nolan Ryan. He said, no, he said he's not going to throw 150, but he said, we'll watch him and he will monitor him. He will tell us how he feels. Buck Showalter hoping he's out of here very quickly, I'm sure. They want to get him to that bullpen if they can. That is well, that's been a disaster area yep. for the Rangers until they get to Russell. Two balls and a strike. I mean, they've run through a lot of pitches already this season. We're not even halfway home. Yeah, over 20 pitchers. I think they've, they've used, what, a total of 41 players with Don Harris coming up. Yeah. And I think, is it 20 or 21 pitchers? Yeah, it was 20 the last time we were here. So I'm sure it's, uh, it's Danny Leone who released that. Down the left side, a long run for Reimer, and that ball is foul. And out of the reach of Reimer, who tried to make a sliding catch. Well, he's tough out there. He's a tough, rough and tumble outfielder. Not known for his defensive work, but he's not afraid to crash the wall out there. He really, uh, even though his father played professional baseball, in a lot of ways defied the odds of making it to the major leagues. In Canada and regions where he didn't get a chance to play a lot of baseball. Two to the count. Oh. And Paul. That hack. Paul looked as bad right there as we've wow. seen him. And wow that's what right. happened. Look at Hall saying, wow, it's that's unbelievable. He swung at a fastball. Watch this. You talk Third about Third chopping Third down Kelly. and buckling. To see a left-handed hitter do that off a right-handed pitcher is just showing extraordinary breaking pitch from Nolan Ryan. And when you get a chuckle from Mal Hall like that, oh. well, Hall gives him his due. <laughs> you're, you're, you're talking about <laughs> a good hitter here in Hall, and boy, when you're reduced to that, they're gonna. That's you got that's nothing a, left but to give the pitcher his due. What you do is you get Al try to get a tape of that and have Mal Hall analyze that swing tomorrow. That ought <laughs> yeah. to be a real. That'll be some fun. Roberto oh. Kelly fouls one back, strike one. It was almost like swinging at Charlie Huff's knuckleball, wasn't it? Man. So two outs with two men on. Roberto under the 290 mark again. Now, Roberto Pierce, since his average has been declining a little bit, it's, he seems to be taking a little bit of defensively. He seems to be playing more deeply than he did earlier in the year. You know, some balls are dropping in. He's trying those sliding catches. He, he's worried about his hitting, I think, and perhaps it's affecting him a little bit defensively. See, those numbers against Ryan, about the best the Yankees have to offer against Ryan in their lineup. Roberto Kelly, this one bounced foul. There's a catcher's interference, I believe. Yep. It's going to get won. first base. Rodriguez was too close to beat. That'll be an error to Rodriguez. And they're going to send Gallego to third. Bases Stankers are going to be second, loaded. And they're loaded. The he got seventh a little, error of yep. the year charged to Rodriguez. Here it is. He fouls it off, but he made contact with the glove. There it is. E2, catcher's interference. Next batter, 40 yard. You see it better from this uh, angle. You can see Rodriguez, instead of letting it come to him, he goes out and gets it. And it costs Ryan. So that's an error charge to Rodriguez and Roberto will not be charged with an at bat due to the catcher's interference. Now here's Don Mattingly. So the Yankees have a shot here with two outs in the third. Strike one to Mattingly. Rodriguez talking with the plate umpire Dale Scott. We've got a running conversation going with him after that first pitch to Mattingly. Rodriguez, by the way, leads the American League in errors. This one catcher's interference. Rodriguez held the ball there for Scott, and the count is one and one. 
Only two of those errors you, you can see there on stolen base attempts. And almost every base you've got to be very aware of Rodriguez throwing behind you. He does have call plays especially with Palmero at first base. He will stick behind a runner. One and one to count to Mattingly. Yankees down by two. Bases loaded. Two outs in the third. Two and one. Yankees had a base runner in the first when Hall drew the walk. Now they're loaded. Gallego third. Stankiewicz at second. And Roberto Kelly on first base. Ryan upset walking around a lot that he got behind Don Mattingly. Two on the count. Here it is. Mattingly on the ground to first. Palmero will make the play unassisted to retire the side. For the Yankees in the third, no runs, one hit out of that, an error. Three men left on base. And at the end of two and a half, the score, Texas two, Yankees nothing. New York Yankees baseball brought to you in part by Chevrolet, the cars and trucks more people depend on. We went through two innings, a sellout crowd, including that young lady right there at Arlington Stadium. A crowd of better than 43,000 on hand. Here's Julio Franco. And the pitch is too close. Ball one. Bobby Valentine, the 41 year old manager there, with his arms folded, talking with his young catcher, Ivan Rodriguez. Gomez, uh, the first base coach, also gets into those conversations. Rodriguez speaks English fairly well. He likes to have Gomez around, somewhat of a mentor to him. And Gomez, the first base coach. Of the Rangers in his second year here. This one is down. And he's one of those fellows who stayed with the game a long time. Orlando Gomez. This is his 29th year in professional baseball. Took him 27 years to get to the big leagues. He's probably more responsible than anybody else that Jose Guzman stayed with his ball club. Guzman was going to become a free agent because they did not protect him two springs ago. Front by Franco. Boy, that's surprising, even though Hayes was way back. Franco's had the bad knee. Yeah, they're monitoring that knee uh, pretty well, too. One of the doctors, just well, I guess a couple hundred miles from here, is working with some Olympic athletes, said that if it starts getting stiff, they've got to get him out of the lineup. Otherwise, it could set him back days. He went to Austin while he was on the disabled list and worked out trying to rehab the thing. 2-2, two -two and he skies it into right. Tartable is there waiting. Well, I said a couple hundred miles away, but here in Texas, Austin could be uh, just around the corner. Yeah, sure. 200 miles, that's nothing here. Third baseman, Dean Palmer. Dean Palmer now. This guy has one of the quickest bats through the strike zone that's come along in a long time. In fact, I think a lot of his strikeouts come because he waits so long, a little bit like Sean Dunstan used to. It's almost like a wild swing trying to catch back up to the ball. When he starts smoothing his swing out a little bit. Back at third. Look at this play by Hayes. And the throw too high. A base hit for Reimer. Boy, Hayes took a double away from Palmer. And made something of a play at first out of that. Great stop by Charlie Hayes. Well, what a great curveball he hit. Got over on the top of it, right down the line. And any of those off-speed pitches, usually it is the shortstop. Stankowitz, in this case, will give a verbal signal to the third baseman so he can protect the line. You're right, that is double written all over it. And Charlie's only chance was to lob it over and couldn't get it down to Mattingly. Man, I mean, what a job oh. Charlie Hayes has turned in at third for the Yankees. Here's Rafael Palmero. Takes it the other way. Fly ball carrying deep to left. And Hall almost got turned around on that ball. But recovers to make the catch just on the track. That's a Palmero type swing though. Hitting the ball the opposite way. He gets that fastball. Even those fastballs inside. He's always hitting well the other way. We saw Palmero the first time up. Trying to pull a pitch. Ground it out to the right side. That's more like his stroke. 
He's a little bit of a warrior too, isn't he? Mm -hmm. uh, you get Happen the feeling well. from Rafael, even when he's with the Cubs, when they said he couldn't drive and run, they want him to pull the ball, uh, take him away from his natural swing. You know, your lifetime's Ruben better than Sierra. him. I guess it's easy to worry when you've been struggling for three months. A ball, no strikes. It's so ironic that he would a fellow with as great a swing as he mm -hmm. has and the kind of success he's had in the past towering fly ball not overly deep to center as Roberto Kelly waits for this one to retire the side in the third no runs a hit with one left Al Troutwig will be coming along now we're through three in Arlington the Rangers lead the Yankees two to nothing. <laughs> Back at Arlington Stadium, the Texas Rangers leading the New York Yankees by the score of two to nothing as Danny Tartable starts it off against Nolan Ryan. Al Troutwick with Tony Kubek for the next two. 64th strikeout of the season for Tartable first time up. There was a time not too many years back where people thought the 5,000 strikeout mark was out of anybody's reach. Nolan Ryan. He pitches next year, might get 6,000. Well, you watch him pitch yeah, a game incredible. like this, Tony, and you think there's no doubt he's coming back for next season. Five strikeouts in the game so far. Well, we've got our uh, shirt sleeves working. Temperature now uh, very balmy, 91 degrees, Tony, perfect, and it's perfect uh, for a ball game. 840 in the evening. Perfect for a ball game. You spent your day at wet and wild, cooling down. <laughs> you didn't say you come to the ballpark. The I heck? did not. Never left the air conditioner. It's a great area around here, isn't it? You can keep yourself busy, that's for sure. Danny hey. Cardinal sends a high fly ball to right field. Back is Sierra, and he grabs it for the out. Those are the signs you look for when Danny Tardival starts jolting with the ball opposite direction. That's where his home run went yesterday. That he is waiting on the ball and seems to have everything in sync. The timing is right. A little bit underneath this one, but still hit pretty well to Sierra. And hitting the fastball out over the plate in that area is one of the, another reason why Danny Tartable is such a good breaking ball hitter. The fastball a little late, and he waits that split second to see what the breaking pitch is going to do. That brings up Kevin Moss, who was another one of Nolan Ryan's strikeout victims in the game so far. That one drops off just outside. So you're uh, producing the pregame show again, I hear. You well, what I do? What Mel Hall? I'm supposed to now analyze his, his I, swing. I just said it, kidding. You can do whatever you want and do in your pregame show. Don't you go for a page manager? Hey, I don't, I don't think Bob was mad. Bob was in the spirit of it. Hey, Tony, he's not even there tonight. Lisa Burkhart was there. You get her tomorrow. I know you. <laughs> one ball and one strike to Kevin Moss. So one of the uh, Rangers executives there is it's one ball and two strikes before the game Tony he said I've got Nolan Ryan against the New York Yankees on July 4th with fireworks after the game if I can't sell this baby out I'm quitting. Line shot to the glove of Palmero. Every time Nolan Ryan makes a pitch he doesn't like, he gets disgusted. He really does show his emotion. That's a curveball he didn't think he had in a good spot. He perhaps wanted to bounce it. And it was hit like a bullet by Kevin Moss, but in disgust, Andrew Nolan Ryan, Ryan walked knows. off the mound. He, even if you hit a ball solidly off him, he gets mad at himself. And then after, still he, a perfectionist. after he showed that disgust, he went out, grabbed the rosin bag, and then really slammed it to the pitcher's mound. That's Matt Noak's turn now. He struck out as well for his 37th time of the season. Bust him inside, strike one. But Tony, you can see the uh, the smile of Mel Hall, the chatter in the dugout. You know, all the hitters take take facing Nolan as an extreme challenge, and it, it leads to a lot of enthusiasm in the dugout from a hitting standpoint. Let's see if we can hear him grunt. Foul back. He grunts on his fastball, not the curve and the changeup. It's a little bit too late for the hitter to realize that. Have you heard him grunt tonight yet? Yeah, yeah the pitch before that one that he threw to uh, Matt Noakes, the fastball up and in. He's like the Monica Sellis of baseball. She was kind of quiet today, though, wasn't she? I don't know. I didn't get a chance to check. And Matt Noakes 
Hicks is 0 for 2. That is the sixth strikeout for Nolan the Legend. 2-0 Texas as they mount the K's on the board in Arlington. Twilight in the Metroplex of Texas. Nolan Ryan talking to his young catcher, Pudge Rodriguez, after that last inning when Nolan Ryan struck out his sixth. He probably said to me, look, that inning, thanks a lot for not getting me in trouble. In the third, catcher's interference, he made me pitch to Maddeny with the bases loaded. Glad you're learning fast, Yvonne. Infield, <laughs> it was an infield single. Somebody was hit by a pitch, and then catcher's interference that loaded the bases. As Juan Gonzalez, the powerful center fielder for the Texas Rangers, starts things off in the fourth inning. He doubled homer run back in the second. Scott Kamenicki trailing two to nothing. Four hits for the Rangers. Scott says he loves to pitch when the weather is hot like this. And Tony, I don't know if you, you know, heard the story of Scott Kamenicki and what he told me before the game and the first time he heard Nolan Ryan. He said it was one of those nights where I was laying in bed listening to Ernie Harwell call a Tigers game on WJR. And he said, suddenly I started to listen and it was the seventh inning and the Tigers didn't have a hit. Then it was the eighth and then it was the ninth and it was... One of those Nolan Ryan no hitters against the Detroit Tigers. Early impact against a nine year old who hadn't even started playing competitive baseball yet, and Scott Kamenicki. One ball and two strikes to Juan Gonzalez. Is there anybody who's not doing the leg kick, by the way, in the uh, Rangers batting order? A lot of them copied Sierra. Gonzalez with 18 home runs on the year. And he launches this one to center. Kelly gets a good jump. Boy, that was a rope. So we've got two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. Let's go to Lisa Burkhardt at the MSG Sports Desk for this update. All right, thanks, Al. It's Shea, Bobby Bonilla, who went two for three in game one against the Strohs. Hits one out in the bottom of the fourth of game two off Mark Portugal. His 11th of the year, Bobby Bow ties it up at one. They're now in the top of the fifth. Back to the Yankees. From the story in Flushing to the one in Arlington, Yankees trailing the Texas Rangers two to nothing. One out, not two, one out in the bottom of the fourth as we watch Kevin Reimer, who struck out his first time up. And I thought, Tony, he looked amazingly uncomfortable in his plate appearance. There's a fair ground ball and Mattingly scoops it. Reimer's 0 for 2. Who looked uncomfortable? Kevin Reimer when he struck out his first time up. Oh yeah. That's... I was just looking to try to document what Cameron if he said that was in July 15, 1973 at Detroit. Angels 6, the Tigers nothing. Good downward action on the breaking ball. You can see it kept biting. Noakes is going to almost dig it out of the ground. Try to keep the fastball away from Reimer, aren't they? So, Tony, let me get this straight. You did not believe Scott Kevin? No, I, no, I did, but I was just trying to figure out exactly when it was. He even got his age right. He was born in 64, so he was nine years old. White Sox Bush uh, bullpen catcher Art Kushner caught that ball game. By the way, uh, speaking of catching no hitters, Mike Stanley came to me before the game and was talking about his days playing here. He said, I may not have made a big impact, but I did a couple of things that will never be forgotten in baseball. That is hit the first pinch hit grand slam in club history, and the other was catch the seventh no hitter for Nolan Ryan. That was May 1st, 1991, when Texas beat Toronto 3 0. Mike Stanley, now of the Yankees, caught that game. Two balls and no strikes. Kamenicki against Rodriguez coming back from a small fracture in his back. Well, it certainly sounds scary. You think you, you start talking about back fractures, you talk about missing an entire season. Here's Mike Stanley, once a Texas Ranger. Who said he learned a lot about catching and setting up hitters by catching Nolan Ryan. Yeah, last time we were here, remember he left the ball, he'd hurt his hand and his back was bothering him. Went on the DL right after that. Rodriguez gets underneath this one, and that's exactly what Mel Hall and Andy Stankiewicz are trying to do. Mel Hall finally does, and that'll do it for the Texas Rangers. A breeze of an inning for Scott Kamenicki. Sweaty Nolan Ryan will make his way to the mound in a moment. 
There was a bit of a hairy moment before today's game here in Arlington, Texas. Uh, you're in the Yankee clubhouse now, and, and there's Tony Kubek getting a, a haircut from Carl Taylor, Yankee bullpen catcher. Carl, of course, now a famous photographer and also the hair cutter of the stars for all the Yankees. How did he do, Tony? Did, did it come out nice? Uh, you be the judge. Did you tip him? I told him just dab a little gray on the sideburns. <laughs> I'm looking more distinguished like you. Uh, hey, he's, he and his wife have had a, a hair salon down in Florida, still do. He was he was a hair stylist full-time when Bucky Dent called and said, guess what, I'm the manager of the Yankees. I'd just like to come work for the club. And he did. He's a great worker. Spent some time with Kansas City. In fact, one year he went to Pittsburgh and he was hitting 340. He couldn't win a job. Couldn't get a job from Al Oliver that year. Charlie Hayes became the 1,151st different player struck out in the career of Nolan Ryan when he was first up in this game back in the third inning. We're in the fifth, and that has fouled off the face mask of Dale Scott, who has taken a pounding in tonight's game. How did you hear that, Grunt? That was the big fastball. They say keep the ball down. That is probably as safe as you can do. Not when you throw the velocity of Nolan Ryan. Look at Rodriguez saying, shake me off one time. I'll come right back to the original call. No grunt on the curve. Come on, darling. I just got mad he threw a ball. One and two. Oh. Oh, pitch. Oh, Charlie Hayes is stunned. I'll tell you what, that ball I think is inside. And he threw it so hard, and it was one of the hardest curveballs he's thrown. Charlie bails out. Now that's not a strike out there, folks. Look at Rodriguez, where he caught it was off the plate. So Dale Scott, and maybe Nolan Ryan deserves that was a charity his way at age 45. Five, what the heck? 5,584 career strikeouts now as the all-time record continues to climb. And here's Mike Gallego, who was hit by Nolan Ryan. Last time up, it was really a glancing blow off his arm. He's hitting 258 now. And in this ballgame so far, to show you how Nolan Ryan thinks about first, only one of the hitters leading off this game thus far in the five innings has hit the ball fair off him. That was Tartable who flied to right field in the fourth. Come on, Nolan, you're looking as good as you nice. You can see him release the, the huge grunt, at least facially there. Well, listen here. Yeah, you can hear it. Right after the release of the pitch, of course, by then it's too late. Oh. <laughs> the thing is already by you. It's like seeing what the Rockets' red glare is like. Goes by like that. Yeah. You hear it more than you see it. Well, I didn't keep too many baseball cards from my early life. I kept about 15 or 20, but I did keep the Nolan Ryan rookie card, Ooh. and that thing last time I checked was up around $1,500. In the vault, I hope. Yeah, it is. Two balls and two strikes to Mike Gallego, the mastery of Nolan Ryan over the Yankees on exhibit here tonight. catch up with it and that is eight strikeouts now for Nolan Ryan this after a game in which Jose Guzman struck out 12 Yankees last night Nolan struck out the side in the second Tartable Moss and Oaks on three different pitches he's gotten the first two Hayes and Gallego with fastball this is Here it is on the strikeout number eight. And now he faces at the top of the Yankee order, Andy Stankiewicz. And there's another strike inside. Tom House is pitching coach who's perhaps studied pitching more than anybody from the biomechanics viewpoint and all else. Says it's just the perfect delivery. Well, isn't that what all the computer analysis yeah. has done? They've, they've put Nolan Ryan's motion, we've talked about this before, into a computer and they've been able to analyze the stress points everywhere in the body as a result of what he goes through to pitch and they've said through analysis of many many pitchers that his is by far the best reaching near perfect in creating stress-free pitching motions 
I think it was Georgia Tech University quite a few years ago, and Noli was in Houston, and the great running back, Campbell, was there, Houston Oilers. They test a lot of Olympic athletes, lower body, and Campbell was one of them, and Nolan Ryan was one, and they did some very sophisticated testing, and they found out that his lower legs, the torque and all the other scientific technology or terms, created more power and force than any athlete they could test. And they, they, they were doing weightlifters, hammer throwers, discus throwers, football players. Remarkable everywhere you look in his career. The 2-2 pitch. Stankiewicz sends it out to short center and left. Reimer coming in and grabbing it. The Yankees are gone in the fifth. But Nolan Ryan strikes out two more Yankees. He's totaling eight now. And so he's got 5,585. New York Yankees baseball brought to you in part by your neighborhood 7-Eleven. Oh, thank heaven for 7-Eleven. Well, it's America's birthday today, July 4th, of course. Most of the country off, and there's Dwayne Statz, who has gotten involved with one of the wilder ties you'll ever see. Dwayne, <laughs> Dwayne purchasing that tie in Boston in a very important city in American history, of course. And Mike Gallego, Mike Gallego grabs the first out off the bat of Dickie Thon. Hope you didn't overpay for that, Dwayne. You're not going to get a lot of usages. <laughs> Second baseman. That'll bring up Houston. Jeff Houston, the second baseman for the Texas Rangers. Quick out for Scott Kamenicki. Rangers leading by a score of two to nothing. Hayes will come in tight. Houston does like the bunt. Charlie will try and take away the bunt down third base as Maddie Lee cheats at first base. Kamenicki, after having a mild disaster in the second inning, only gave up an infield single, faced four batters in the third, then got the Rangers one, two, three in the fourth. No question there are two different strike zones so far in this ball game. Not that Kamenicki's had great control, but the strike zone for him is not as expansive for Nolan. And Nolan doesn't need it as much as Kamenicki does. You can see that first pitch thrown. Noak just held it there and held it there. Overheard clubhouse comments this afternoon included Dale Scott being not so tough on the first and second strike, but a lot mm -hmm. tougher on pitchers in making them earn the third strike. He's too kind hearted. He doesn't want to punch out those hitters. And the walk, four pitches to Jeff Houston. So at 9 o'clock Central Time in Arlington Stadium in Texas, the sun is gone. The temperature is cooled to 91 degrees as we bring you game two of the series on MSG. And in the bottom of the fifth, with one out, the Rangers lead the Yankees by the score of two to nothing. Al Troutwick with Tony Kubek. Dwayne Statz will be back next inning, of course. And you can see uh, how hot it remains. Uh, conference on the mound now. Matt Noakes with Scott Kamenicki and Julio Franco stepping in. That basically is to settle Kamenicki down, to get him back in the game. He thought there was at least one pitch in the series to Houston that was in the strike zone. Good move by Noakes. Kamenicki had a modest streak of retiring six consecutively before that walk to the ninth place hitter. Franco starting the last four games now as the DH after missing five due to the recurring soreness in his right knee. Houston back on the throw from Kamenicki. And here's a guy who has such tremendous bat control, Franco. Houston's got a trace of speed and with a bad leg. He does hit the ball on the ground. We'll hit into a lot of double plays at times, so. Houston getting a big lead off Kamenicki. Just back is Houston. Rangers have been taking advantage of Kamenicki's slow delivery and Matt Noakes. They've stolen two bases in the game so far, both in the second. Ooh, he almost, boy. He, well, what he did was he dove too soon. He was thinking he was probably farther off than he thought. He's, usually it's like one step or one stride in the dive, and he took one stride in the dive, and he almost didn't make it back. First pitch to Franco, still not there. Back in the second inning, Rafael Palmero. Actually, it was Dickie Thon stole third without even drawing a throw. Franco still waiting for his first pitch, and Matt Noakes wants to go out to Kamenicki. 
Don't you think he's saying let's concentrate a little bit more on the hitter and don't get so distracted or? Yeah, I would, I'm sure that's part of it. You know, you want to throw over there and throw over a couple times and perhaps Noakes did not call that pickoff move over. He might have called a pitch out. And we threw over a few times. Now we'll pitch out and Kamenicki may have gone over because after Kamenicki snapped the ball over, he disgustedly almost threw his hand down that he may have missed something. First pitch to Franco is a ball. Want to know? You saw a brief look at Buck Showalter there. Buck has been wearing his warm-up jacket all season, but the heat of Texas made that a, a bad move. So they, because he doesn't like to wear the uniform top, had to dig out an old Yankee dark blue top. It becomes a an, 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 almost a trivia question, Tony. What number is Buck Showalter on the Yankees? Because fans never get a chance to see it. Runner holding on the pitch, and it's a strike to Franco, one and one. What is it? And why doesn't he like to I am a, wear it? I had to think about it. He's number 11. He just doesn't like it. Hmm. But you never see it. I would think uh, right around the All-Star break, Buck's going out there, thereabouts. You might hear about an offer that may have been giving him to extend his contract. It'd be about that time? That's about time. Actually, it's much later than about so, time. You know, perhaps next week, or at least some preliminary talk should begin shortly if they already haven't. With, uh, Commissioner Faye Vincent, perhaps uh, this next week. Uh, I'm sure George Steinbrenner knows at this point what his decision is and when he will be back, but I'm talking about making it public. We'll see some things start moving into action. Well, if you develop valuable players and when they become valuable, you like to keep them. Same thing with managers. You develop somebody and when they become valuable and noticed as Buck has become with his placement on the All-Star coaching staff, you have to take steps to protect it. How about the way Tom Kelly asked uh, Buck Schroeder if he'd come to the All-Star game? That's a cute story, isn't it? Called, uh, called Buck into the laundry room, I guess, at the <laughs> Metrodome. And as he chomped on a cigar and sat there with his old fishing cap on, just said, you know, Buck, you don't have to tell me now. Just think about it. Low-key style of Tom Kelly, huh? Slow roller, Stankiewicz to Gallego, and... Mattingly gets back on the bag, did he? You got it. He got it. Pretty good pivot by Gallego. The ball was it so slowly, and because of Franco's knee was so bad, Gallego got offended but still got a throw off. All right. Kamenicki survives the fifth, so if I. I'll see you in the post-game report. Dwayne Stats back with Tony in a moment. Let's go to Lisa Burkhardt at the MSG Sports Desk in New York. All right, thanks, Al. The Mets now in the bottom of the sixth inning in game two of their doubleheader with the Houston Astros. The score still tied at one apiece. Bobby Bonilla with a solo homer in that one. Meanwhile, in game one, the Mets beat the Astros 5-3 to three, thanks to another Bobby Bo home run that locked it up. July 4th holiday might have been too much for some fans. Bottom of the eighth when Bonilla takes Al Osuna deep to left center. 407 feet is 10th of the year, and the Mets take it 5-3. to three. Jeff Ennis with his first save of the season. Doc Gooden got the win in his six and seven now on the year. If you missed it from earlier, the Yankees put reliever Steve Farr on the disabled list with back problems and called up Kurt Young. We'll be back. Sports Desk is brought to you by Nobody Beats the Wiz Home Entertainment Centers. For everything in home electronics, music, and movies, Nobody Beats the Wiz. Three-time Wimbledon champ Steffi Graf is now a four-time champion after surprising Monica Seles today in the finals of Wimbledon in straight sets. In the men's semifinals, Croatia's Goran Ivanisevic outs American Pete Sampras in four sets to gain his first Grand Slam, uh, uh, Grand Slam final, while 12th-seeded Andre Agassi eliminates New York's own John McEnroe. That's the news from the MSG Sports Desk. We'll see you after the game for our half-hour edition of Sports Desk. Now let's send you back to the Yankees. Dwayne Stats, Tony Kubak back in Arlington. A wonderful 4th of July with the Rangers leading 2 to nothing behind Nolan Ryan in this state in Yankee history. Toyota Heading brings it to you. York, 1983, Dave Rigetti, Rigetti no hit the Red Sox 4-zip at the stadium. The first Yankee no-no in 27 years. This is Toyota's date in Yankee history. Toyota, I love what you do for me, Toyota. Mal Hall, Roberto Kelly, Don Mattingly. Paul walked in the first. He struck out on a wicked curveball in the third. Nolan Ryan has allowed just one base hit through five. Has struck out eight. An infield hit to Andy Stankowitz. That came in the third. 
And Tony, one and one. since he made that start against the Yankees and threw only 10 pitches and had to leave, he's made four starts. He's pitched pretty well, just one win, two losses, and a no decision. But I can't imagine that he's thrown the ball any better at any time this year than he has tonight. Foul out of play, one ball, two strikes on Mal Hall. Well, when Nolan Ryan was in that string of a, was it 11 consecutive decisions without a win, yep. he felt that there were times in there he was pitching well until he recently got that decision. In fact, he compared it to the year you probably saw when he was at Houston because you were the Cubs then. Yep. When he, he went 8 and 16 one year with he, Houston. He led the league in ERA. Yep. Was eight games below 500. Hall grounds his sinker ball to Palmero. There is one out in the sixth. But tonight, out of Ryan, we've seen the hard stuff. I can't imagine that he's thrown a pitch any harder than he did the first pitch to Gallego in the fifth Kelly. inning. He just blew the ball right by him. And then we've seen the change up and a good breaking ball. He struck out the side in the second. Which helped along with his eight strikeouts in this ball game. Now 5,585, and every time he gets another K, he increases his hold on the all-time record. One of those, he'll probably say, like Garrett's, like Joe D's 56 straight, will never be broken. Roberto Kelly has fouled out and on with catcher's interference. That's when the Yankees mounted a threat. With two outs and two on, Roberto Kelly's bat was tipped by Rodriguez and loaded him up and then Mattingly hit the ball fairly hard but grounded to first base and left him loaded. Right on the outside corner to Kelly. No balls, two strikes. Ryan started this game with a lot of change-ups and curve balls and he's gone more to the fastballs as he going through the Yankee lineup for the third time. Oh my, number nine. Boy, oh he just my. did to Roberto Kelly what he did to Mel Hall earlier in this game First when he struck out nine. Hall with a curveball in the third inning. And boy, he looks he makes Roberto Kelly look as bad as he looked all year. The only thing is more painful about this to Roberto it's about as weird a hack, as funky a swing as Hall's, but it's a little more terrorizing because it's a right-hander who starts the curveball right out of your noggin. Yep. At least Mal Hall, the curveball started out over the plate. Two outs for Mattingly. He is flied out and grounded out. Out in front out of change. I remember the rigorous training regimen that Nolan Ryan had when he was in Houston. The Dr. Gene Gary Coleman. Gene Coleman, who from the NASA program set up a specific training program for Ryan training in the pool and a lot of other things fouled off Mattingly couldn't catch up to it two strikes you know early in his career he had a lot of hamstring problems he had a history of pulled and strained hamstrings and that was one of the reasons Dr. Coleman designed that pool work for him he he was out with a hamstring injury wanted to maintain his cardiovascular and found that he could do it in a pool and from there they built an entire program up around that. He gets Mattingly, so he now has 10 strikeouts. Give Rodriguez an assist and Palmero a put out. So Ryan in the fifth and sixth has struck out four of the six battles. He'll go to the bottom of the sixth. A very, very dominating Nolan Ryan, 2 nothing. He's got to lead. Back in Arlington, it looks like a full house. Looks like some standing room. Fourth of July, there'll be some fireworks. Great pregame display. And Nolan Ryan struck out 10 Yankees. Dean Palmer, Rafael Palmero, Ruben Sierra. Palmer struck out against Kamenicki in the first off a curveball, and he's also single. Nice play by Charlie Hayes. Prevented that from being a double. It's going to be chopped foul. Two strikes. The two Rangers run. The only two runs in this ballgame came in the second. Sierra single. Gonzalez a double. 
Reimer struck out. Rodriguez flied out. Dickey found then doubled home the second Rangers run. Breaking ball misses away. One and two. Really, that's the only rough inning, the second that Kamenicki has had. He is allowed just one base hit and a walk aside from the second. Sometime against a Nolan Ryan, that might be enough. Curveball misses up and in. Two and two. Well, Kamenicki now trying to finish Dean Palmer off. They're going 0 and 2. It is the fourth sellout of the season here in Arlington, 40,726. Full count, he missed with a slider. A lot of bleacher seats here. In fact, uh, one of the reasons why they're building a new ballpark and it was passed very easily, all those seats have about half the total capacity our bleacher seats. From foul pole to foul pole. So when they get those sky boxes going and uh, do a job in selling those to the industry down here, this Kamenicki is trying to regroup right here. He didn't like the idea of walking the leadoff man here. And I think a couple of times during the sequence of pitches to Palmer thought he might have had a strike. So he's trying to bring himself back on track here and not let the disputed calls distract him. How many times have we talked to Mark Conner about Yankee pitchers finishing off hitters? He had Palmer, no balls, two strike, who has a, a very high strikeout till he could not put him away. Curveball strike to Palmero. He's lined the left hard near the warning track and grounded the first. Bobby Valentine put Palmero in the eighth spot for a couple of games, and Rafael was. Very outspoken about it. Got in the media that he didn't think it was a good idea that Bobby Valentine should give up on him when he was struggling. Out in front. Tardable may have a double play. If he had not slid, and I don't know if the ball got in the lights that he had to protect himself and go down. He makes a sliding catch. That has become a very popular play for Yankee outfielders. Well, except for Mal Hawk. And unless you have to do this, there's really no point in it because but, it doesn't leave you in much of a position to make any kind of play and you can see Palmer he's double up. well off the bag at first and he's a cinch double play if Tartable can catch the ball standing up somebody uh, World War II model airplane just came <laughs> shooting out point first behind Tartable Ruben Sierra, he's single stone the base, scored a run and fly down. There's the plane. <laughs> but outfield is outfield is still soft and we were here a month ago with all that standing water around. Uh, very, very wet spring down here. Dale Scott gives the outside corner at the knees to Kamenicki on that pitch to Sierra. Tony, and as a result of that, as you look around the edges of the infield on the grass part here. It is not in as good a shape as it usually is. This is one of the infields that most players like in the major leagues. Yeah, Jim Anglia, the groundskeeper who came from Cleveland several years ago, really has a great, great field here. But you know, you get that combination of too much water, then all this heat, and the grass can become diseased. And it's always been a very smooth infield. You know, infielders look for consistency in the dirt part. Generally speaking, they've gotten that here. A ball and a strike with one out and one out, and the Rangers leading two to nothing. Kamenicki's taking a lot of time now. And that's another thing that Mark Connor discourages. He you likes t-shirts. Yep. <laughs> he likes to emphasize working quickly. Keeping the ball down and changing speed. He's got it written all over his pitcher's T-shirts and his own. Live ball, short left field. Stankiewicz in pursuit. He will have it after a long run battling that swirling wind. So Palmer will hold at first base. There are two outs. It's a nice play by Stankiewicz, who covers a lot of ground going out into left and finds himself in a little bit 
of a tough angle here because of that wind. But you get those sluggers like Sierra for that great opposite field power, gap powers to right, left, center field. Mal Hall bunched him to the middle, and he was playing very deep. Now it's Juan Gonzalez. He's hit the ball hard twice. You can see where Hall and Kelly have gone with two outs. The man on first take away the long hit. Prevent that runner from scoring from first. We don't know if all the throws from Kamenicki to first base are being called from the bench through notes or if he's doing it on his own. Got it. And that hit his back. That's something very hard. And trainer Danny Weed out again. Fastball that just kept following Juan Gonzalez. Here it is. It's been a tough night around that plate for hitters, catchers, and umpires. Dale Scott's gotten a Left couple of shots back Kevin there, and this one Reimer. riding up and in. Juan Gonzalez got him. You know, unfortunately, I think uh, he got that hand off the bat so he couldn't get it pinned there. Trying to protect himself. Kamenicki already has established a reputation of pitching hard inside. I remember, he was on the mound when Buck Showalter and Tony Larusa. Willie Wilson was very vocal. And they met behind home plate. The strike to Kevin Reimer, fouled off. He struck out on a changeup and grounded the first. There are two down. He was looking for something off speed on that first pitch, trying to wait, and waited too long. He's been struggling a bit lately, 0 for 16. Another off speed pitch. Kamenicki's got him two strikes. They will send the runners back. As, as a foul tip. It is that big leg kick by Reimer and that breaking ball darting down. He's and Reimer just got a little piece of it. He's throwing some of his best curve balls with that downward action to Kevin Reimer. Boy, that left hand hitter, he gets on top of it. See if he can finish Reimer off with two outs and two on. He got him. He backdoored a breaking ball. Nokes. Held it on the outside corner, framed it nicely. Reimer didn't like it. He leaves two stranded after six here in Arlington. Kamenicki starting to pitch a lot better. Two nothing Rangers. Tickets for all Yankee home games on sale at the stadium advanced ticket window Monday through Saturday 9 to 5 Sunday 10 to 5 and at the Yankees clubhouse store and at all Ticketmaster locations including select video connection stores to charge tickets call Ticketmaster 212 307 1212 the 46th annual Old Timers Day Classic coming up Saturday July the 11th breaking ball upstairs to Danny Tartable stays inside ball one Tartable is nothing out of two. Included among the 10 strikeouts posted by Nolan Ryan tonight, the 214th time in his career that he has struck out at least 10 in a game. This one fouled out of play. So the count, a ball and a strike to Danny Tartable. Danny will be followed by the Yankees designated hitter Kevin Moss and Matt Noakes with Texas leading this game two to nothing. Both runs came in the second. Carnival went, says Ted Henry. Trying to hold up, but now Carnival's behind on the count one and two. Here's another look. One of the least pleasant things that could have gone either way, I guess, is for a hitter to come up after one of Nolan Ryan's players has been hit. I'm going to start bailing a little bit because uh, he will protect his own. It probably is the situation right here. 
leadoff hitter, two to nothing, but he is going to protect his people. A ball, two strikes. He has walked only one tonight. That was Mel Hall in the first inning. Carnival held up this time. So they all even out, I guess, and the count is 2 2. Borderline call. Yes, one time. Nope, the next time. Here's another look. 20 year old Ron right, Rodriguez learning in a hurry. Immediately tags him, tries to buy the call. The 2 2. And a tap to the shortstop, Dickie Thon. Go over to Palmero, and that's the first out in the Yankee seventh inning. One gone with nobody on as we take a look at the Budweiser game recap. A Gonzalez double in the second inning made it one to nothing and then Fonz double chased home the second run. On the Budweiser game recap the Rangers lead the Yankees two to nothing. Well, Dwayne you probably know Nolan Ryan as well as almost anybody in this ballpark you know. Does he ride horses a lot. Yeah, horseman. Yeah. Sure. Well, I'm just wondering, and he's probably done it as a kid. I'm Katie. His whole time. I wonder if you know, he's a strong guy, and I wonder just holding horses like he does. That had a lot to do with strengthening his hands, that he can put that spin on the curveball. I remember always talking about Ted Williams, though, he used to fly fish. And so mm -hmm. that helped his wrists and his hands to strengthen them for hitting. A ball, no strikes to count to Kevin Moss. One ball, one strike. Well, he's always been a fellow who's worked it. Yeah. If you work a ranch and this is not a gentleman farmer oh, no. in Alvin he's, Texas he has cattle and he's right there and he's probably wrestled a few steers to the ground and taking a <laughs> few cows and brand them and flip them over he's got he's a strong guy a ball and two strikes well he's been involved in the calving process and all oh, that yeah. and, and for someone who's directly involved in all of that that's a physical activity and Ryan has done that year in and year out. One ball, two strikes. This one foul. Speaking of branding, they have the Cattlemen's Association Museum here in Fort Worth. And mm -hmm. in that museum, they have uh, a listing of all the major cattle ranchers and their brands included in there the N Bar R brand belonging to Nolan Ryan. Is that the Triple K Ranch? Nope. This one foul the other way and out of reach. So the count is still a ball and two strikes. Too many strikeouts. There's Jeff Johnson. All of a sudden the Yankees are back to three left-handers in their bullpen. Johnson, Cataray, and it's Kirk Young. Young was to supposed to be here about 8.30 yeah. tonight. So uh, until we see him, we don't know for sure that he's here, but he was supposed to be in. That's right. The Yankee bullpen full of lefties again. In case you missed it, Steve Farr has been placed on the disabled list. Count goes to 2 2 on Moss. Farr on the DL. How do you throw a ball by this kid? I guess it's just too high, he couldn't get at it. <laughs> he is so quick behind home plate. Number 11 for Ryan. Boy, Ryan, the way he has changed speeds tonight. He had a great fastball, great curveball, and then the change. Just turns that Look change over. Thing. Looks like a screwball. Watch the power when he drives toward the plate. First of all, that high front leg kick. Look at the action of his back leg doing. He drops and then drives. Ooh. Here's Matt Noakes. Noakes swings over this one. Noakes has struck out twice tonight. Hall once, Kelly once, Mattingly once, Tarnable once, Moss twice, Noakes twice. Leadoff hitters the only way in the game. twice and Gallego once. Two strikes to count on Noakes and Andy Stankiewicz, who has the only hit off Ryan. That base hit in the third, the only Yankee hitter not to strike out tonight so far. And Noakes is down in the count, nothing in two. 
What are the odds of having three pitchers come through the same organization with longevity that Ryan, Seaver, and Kuzman have? Mm -hmm. And wow. a fastball. Wow. Oh, boy. He threw that one by him, and that gives him a dozen. And as he walks off the mound, the crowd of 40,000 plus on its feet. 2 nothing, Texas. We're in Arlington, Texas on the 4th of July. Full house in Arlington Stadium. Fans enjoying their holiday. And some of the baseball birthdays on the 4th of July, starting with Mickey Welch, 1859, but then into this century, Bill Tuttle, the outfielder, and Chuck Tanner, Hal and Ed Armbruster, Jim Beatty, now active Jose Okendo, and Rick Wilkins, and of course George Steinbrenner, the principal owner of the Yankees. Yvonne Rodriguez goes after the first pitch and lifts the fly ball directly to Mel Hall, who didn't have to move a step. And Rodriguez is Short 0 for 3. One gone in the seventh. Been a great learning experience tonight for Scott Kamenicki. Had just the one rough inning in the second. Yeah, he's given up just four hits and those two runs coming in the second. And three of those hits occurred in that frame. And there's a ball to Thon. Tough ballpark to pitch in. The ball carries very well. Tough lineup to pitch in. Scored more runs last year, this Rangers team, than any other team in the major leagues. That two ball, no strike count. They've had a problem the Rangers have functioning on all cylinders this year. There's a hard hit ball into left by Thon. He'll make the turn, and will he challenge Hall? Not this time. Thon, who doubled up the right side in the second inning, holds on with a base hit here in the seventh. Second baseman, Jeff Houston. Dickie Thon goes up and get this one. A four-seam fastball. Hooks it right over the top of Charlie Hayes. We see some action on the base pass here. I guess we're going to see some throws from Kamenicki to first. That's been his pattern. And there's a beach ball loose in straightaway center field right now. This far from the coast, kind of strange to see a beach ball. In Los Angeles, I can understand it. They come right from the beach in a day of surfing to the ballpark there. I guess they could surf down the Guadalupe River here and bring one of their beach balls in. Or that river they're going to create out in center field, the new ballpark. They could have a river walk there, create two artificial lakes, and have a river alongside a little league field there, and a lot of other niceties for the fans in a few years. Jeff Houston up there. And the pitch is a strike. He walked in the fifth, grounded out his first time. He's had a little hitting streak going for the last week or so, a six gamer. He has a man at first and one out with Texas leading the Yankees two to nothing. Don, the base runner. He's leaning a little bit, started to go and stopped, and the pitch just missed. Kamenicki froze him a little bit. It looked like something might have been on, but Scott held the ball and held the ball, but also uh, he lost sight of the strike, strike zone, too. Kamenicki up around 90 pitches right now. Ron is back in. The Yankees have had the left-hander Jeff Johnson up in the bullpen. He's been dropped from the rotation. Johnson has, and Sean Hillegas will go into the rotation and pitch on Tuesday. Sounds like Hillegas is going to get two starts before the All-Star break, so they can take a good close look at him. This one is a little low. Two balls and a strike. Those last two pitches, Kamenicki worried about Thon, rushed his delivery to home plate. Mm -hmm. Again, that gets you a little deeper in the count. The top of the order, the D.H. Franco stands on deck. Yeah. 
Good running count. Don back in standing up. Rangers have a couple of steals tonight. Like their runs, the stolen bases also came in the second inning. Found the runner. Time call. One out and a two ball, one strike count on Jeff Houston, the hitter. Houston, pretty good contact man as well. And again, Kamenicki goes to first. Temperature just dropped under the 90 degree mark at 9.38 Central Time. It's 89. Two on the count. Here we go. Is Thon going? Not this time, and the pitch is bounce foul. You know those darn cold cuts can sure ruin a pleasant Fourth of July. And the 89. <laughs> 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 I've been yeah. here uh, a few years ago. We're at game time, 7:30. It's been 101 degrees. Yep. You know, so. Frank Howard wanted to oh, take it's back up to 90. There you go. See Frank Howard wanted to have extra hitting three consecutive days. The Buck Shoulder said no way. We'll have it two of the three days but we're not going to die in the heat and have all these players. Exhausted. There goes Todd and the two two skied in the left. Paul will have to go back a few steps for this one to make the catch for the out Two gone as it turns out the Yankees did have a few extra guys out today mm -hmm. hitting. And working on various parts of the game. It's almost like taking one of Frank's toys away, where you don't let him come out and work, you know, about four or five extra hours. Well, he's here. It, it, it seems as if he's here at about 8.30 in the morning for a night game. And he works every crossword puzzle mm -hmm. that's in every publication in existence. Waits for extra hitting. Here's the top of the order, Julio Franco. Thank you. Frank yesterday was honored with some other people. They had a nice banquet here, for luncheon. He said an original Ranger, which is what he was. Ted Williams was down here managing the ball club. And the pitch is a ball. And again, Thon over at first base was making a little indications as if he might start to move and appeared to be frozen again as Kamenicki rushed his delivery. Don back in. Don is 11 out of 12 in the stolen base department this year. On a team that really doesn't have a whole lot of speed anymore. One time Franco could run. Sierra doesn't run. He's had a little knee problem all year. Gonzalez with a hamstring problem. Bouncer to third, handled by Hayes. Frank goes out. So are the Rangers in the seventh. No runs, one hit, one left. And at the end of seven tonight from Arlington, the Rangers lead the Yankees two to nothing. New York Yankees baseball brought to you in part by Johnsonville Brats. Try them and get the hops for the brats with the simply great taste of Johnsonville. On to the eighth inning. Charlie Hayes leads off against Nolan Ryan. Strike one. Well, Ryan here on the first pitch shows signs of tiring, doesn't he? There's John Cangelosi in left. Yeah, he, he comes struck, out firing here in the eighth. Struck out seven of the last ten. First pitch is as hard a fastball as he's thrown in this game. And that was Hayes. his 100th pitch of the night right there. Hayes fouls it back, and he's behind in the count. Nothing in two. It's almost like Nolan and Bobby Ryan have a, a, a rather Bobby Valentine have a pack. You don't see Valentine going over and talk to him. It's an understanding if Noli signals from the mound that he might be weakening or goes into the bench, he'll tell Bobby Valentine. And a bouncer foul. Well, here's Ryan, 45, and he knows he's a special case, speaking of Valentine, in terms of a fellow hanging around as long as Ryan has. Similar to a situation in Chicago with Carlton Fisk, 
and they've run into a little problem over there. Fisk has his own way of doing things and his own. Did Hayes go? Nope, he held up. The count is of all and two strikes, and Fisk kind of felt he was pressured to go along with the overall program there as opposed to some of his own, and things have not worked out as well as he would like this year. Something too low, two two. Something Punch Fisk uh, may be released, but the All Star break mm -hmm. been floating around the city of Chicago. So there's something perhaps to be said for letting a veteran who has great longevity, the way Ryan does here, do the things that he knows that keeps him ready. Count still. Two balls and two strikes on Charlie Hayes. Nolan Ryan, 12 strikeouts tonight, one walk. He's hit a man and has given up one hit. 24 strikeouts by the two starting pitches for Texas in consecutive nights. Gooseman at 12 mm -hmm. yesterday, too. New schedule to have a hard thrower going tomorrow night in Bobby Witt. He's had problems with his neck and has been working out, and he was listed as a probable starter for tomorrow's game. Scott Sanderson scheduled a pitch for the Yankees. Well, they're starting pitching, especially since Ryan is healthy and back in the groove. Their starting pitching is pretty good. Kevin that Brown. bullpen Ooh. has been a problem. Yeah, and Brown, we didn't even mention him. That's going to go up the middle and a base hit into center for Charlie Hayes to open the Yankee eighth. So the Yankees put the leadoff man on for the first time tonight. Second baseman Mike Gallego. That was 13 in a row retired by Ryan before the base hit by Hayes. Fastball, that little sinking action with Charlie Hayes, and what a pretty swing that was. Did he stay on that? As Ryan throwing as hard as he does with that great curveball will make you focus at all times. And you've got to be very alert. He'll so quick, a good at bad for Charlie Hayes. Yeah, he'll quicken up your bat, won't he? Mm -hmm. Trying to catch up to things. Now Gallego. And it misses wide. Ball one. Bobby Valentine's going to get his bullpen going. Kenny Rogers and Jeff Russell. Rogers was in the ball game yesterday. Got lit up a little bit. And Tony, just as they got up, you could hear a little ripple go through the crowd here. They know what's been going on with this bullpen. Gallego pops it up on the right side. And Palmero in the foul territory makes the catch. Well, Bobby Valentine really is getting used to actually having a bullpen without a setup man or middle relief. I mean, uh, his closer, Russell's been all right. Although this staff has blown 14 saves in this bullpen. Uh, the highest in the major leagues. Yep. Highest blown saves, highest losses among bullpens. An earned run average of 5.27. And you're right, Russell has been good. But boy, to get the game to him has been something else. And they would prefer to use him only in the ninth if they could. He's throwing here in the eighth. Now Andy Stankiewicz, who has the other Yankee hit, that came in the third. Foul ball, strike one. Got to wonder when Rodriguez went out there if Nolan Ryan did not call him out. And maybe just get that extra breath, a little bit more rest after the Gallego pop up. And the ball popping away from Rodriguez, but he stays in a position to make a play on that as the ball That's kind of scooted off to his right. It's a hard curveball. This is a baseball that they should very quickly, Andy Stankiewicz should ask to look at. Once it hits the dirt, when Nolan Ryan got this back, he checked every surface on that thing to see if there's a little abrasion there. And any pitcher will do it and use it. And once the ball bounces like that, 
with these cowhide covers. They can get scratched pretty easily. That Down one is two hard. and one. That wasn't as hard a fastball right there. I don't know mm -hmm. if some of the edges going off Nolan or not. Well, he came out and threw that very good fastball to Hayes on the first pitch. Yeah, he's, he may sense right here. He knows his own body and he knows his own fastball that that last one especially didn't have as much on it. Two and two. Well, you just never know, do you? Yeah, you, know, you don't talk to Nolan Ryan and talk to him as if he's a thrower. He gets very upset with that. I remember even years ago when he was walking a lot of guys, he said, no, I'm a pitcher and I pitch to spots, which I think he's always tried to do. Mm -hmm. As hard as he throws, he's tried to spot pitches. <laughs> All the way. <laughs> they want to a complete game. Or they just say Nolan. Nolan, yeah. Nolan. And he fouls this one out of play. Stankiewicz does. He has 220 complete games in his major league career. Who says and one pitchers this don't year. finish anymore? Pitching one out into the eighth inning in this one. Twelve strikeouts tonight. He's the only guy he hadn't gotten, as you mentioned a while ago. Stankiewicz at 2 2. And he fights this one off, staying alive. Fouling it down the right side. Ryan with 5,589 career strikeouts now. Stankiewicz got that base hit back in the third. Charlie Hayes has opened the eighth inning with a single. He's on first. They really had never hit against Ryan before. Stankiewicz and Hayes have the hits. There's a fly ball into left center field. Cangelosi on the run, on the run, on the run, and makes the catch on the warning track. And back to first goes Hayes. No sooner does Bobby Valentine put Cangelosi into the game, and Stankiewicz makes a bid for an extra base hit, and Cangelosi pulls it in. Pretty perceptive. Uh, you've got to believe that Bobby Valentine, because Reimer might still have gotten an at bat in this game. He's his fifth scheduled hitter in his eighth inning, and if something should happen, that Ryan got tied up. So a little questions by Valentine getting Reimer out of the outfield, and John Casalosi, a center fielder, runs it down. Look at Andy. He thought it was going to drop in. Well, if Reimer's out there, the Yankees have a run, and Stankiewicz in scoring position, maybe at third. With only one out, but instead, Cangelosi makes a fine running catch. And here's Mel Hall with a man at first and two outs as Hall takes the pitch wide, ball one. When you hit a fastball up there, as Andy Stankowitz did, hit it that hard, you know Nolan's lost just a tad off the fastball, but he's still trying to spot pitches. Right on the outside corner. One and one. Paul looking for a pitch he can pull and drive to right field. Ryan tailed the fastball away. Paul walked his first time 0 for 2. Struck out in the third on a curveball that Paul was completely dominated by. This one hard up and away 2 and 1. It is very doubtful. We will ever see another like him. Mm -hmm. I don't know where he's going to come from. No, me neither. Ryan has shut out the Yankees so far on two hits. Ball at the plate. Hayes at first. And a fly ball into right. Sierra is there to make the catch. And the Yankees are out in the eighth. No runs, one hit. One man left. We're going to the bottom of the eighth. Two to nothing, Texas. Bottom of the eighth inning coming from Arlington with the Rangers leading two to nothing. Nolan Ryan has shut out the Yankees on 
two hits so far tonight through eight innings. There's the last pitch of the inning to get Hall in the top of the eighth. Look at the location and the movement on this. He turns it over. Hall, two and one, is trying to pull this, get it in the seats with a man on it, tie it up. And Ryan makes a just a great pitch, as good as any fastball strikeout pitch he's thrown. That pitch was just as big as any of them. Yeah, and we saw the first pitch to Charlie Hayes. Here's Dean Palmer leading off the bottom of the eighth against Kamenicki with a base hit, and that's the sixth hit given up by Kamenicki. Well, Ryan in that inning came out and threw the ball as hard as he has all night on that first pitch to Hayes, and then wound up making over 20 pitches in that inning. And as you pointed out, Tony, throughout the inning. Maybe lost a little something. Pitching Spotted the spots. It. Made a great pitch to Hall and got him. Now with his leadoff single by Dean Palmer, Rafael Palmero steps in and the Yankee bullpen's going to go back to work. That's Tim Burke, the right-hander. Jeff Johnson was up last inning, the lefty. And a soft strike. So, I, mean, I think also what was interesting in that eighth inning, Cataray joins Tim Burke. I also think it was interesting that Nolan on that eighth went pretty much with his fastball. The pitch that has been his meal ticket for all these years. He stayed with the fastball because he probably figures he's got better control of it. One strike to count. Bomber is back in. Now the Yankees in the ninth will have Roberto Kelly, Don Mattingly, and Danny Tartable. Right now. Down by two as Kamenicki tries to keep the Rangers within reach. Almero hitless tonight. A couple of fly balls, including one of the warning track, and there's a base hit. Going to drop in there. Palmer makes the turn, but he will not challenge Kelly. Change of upstairs from Kamenicki. So he may be showing more signs of wear and tear than the 45 year old. So Palmero's on, and Ruben Sierra is due with nobody out. Two men on. Noakes with a trip to the mound. Yankee bullpen busy. And here comes Mark Connor. Seven innings plus these two hitters in the eighth for Kamenicki. And Mark Connor strolls to the mound. With Sierra's numbers this year, you want to keep him from the left side. You look at his numbers batting right handed, he's just under 400. Yep. A little over 260, 265, I think, the other way. Well, we started talking about the glamour names he may possibly be. For agents after the season, like Puckett and Ripken and Barry Bonds and CF. I mean, I'm certain a lot of the clubs are going to have to resign some of these people. Economics allowing. Boy, there are going to be some some names could be on the uh, list after the World Series this year. Well, there's Ruben Sierra. Sierra scored the first Texas run. Palmer has opened the eighth with a single. Palmero followed with a base hit. Sierra one for three. Fly ball into left. Hall is there to make the catch. One guard. With Tony Kubek, this is Dwayne Stats from Arlington, Texas. We're at Arlington Stadium before a sellout crowd. Bottom of the eighth, the Rangers, who scored two runs in the second inning, have a two to nothing lead. Sierra, the first out here in the eighth. Looks like he jammed himself, didn't he? And the jump all over that first pitch from Kavanicki, and the fastball sailed in on his fist. Now Juan Gonzalez. Gonzalez with 18 home runs. The 11 of those came in June. He doubled in a run in the second, was hit by a pitch in the sixth, lined to center in the fourth inning. Kamenicki leaves one upstairs, ball one.
The Yankees came back to beat Texas last night nine to six. They've had a tough time with Ryan tonight. One more shot against the Rangers. Yankees the have had strike a, one and one. The Yankees have had a tough time in this ballpark the last few years. Yep. They won just one game here last year. One and five and finished five and seven overall against the Texas Rangers. One and one the count to Juan Gonzalez. Kamenicki who had slowed the pace greatly in the sixth and seventh doing the same thing here in the eighth after the first two men had reached. Whatever he said brought a little smile to the face of Matt Noakes. Show Walter and Connor would like to be able to smile. See Kamenicki get out of this spot. The 1 1 off the end of the bat foul down beyond Orlando Gomez. So it's a one ball, two strike count. This is the kind of experience that is great for a pitcher like Kamenicki trying to build up innings in the major league level. Obviously, in this heat, he's going to be a little bit tired, but learning to pitch through trouble against a team like this and a hitter like this who's been so hot in June. Sometimes you can learn more from this experience than he could five or six other starts. This one a little close. Wow. And the count is, oh, did he get him? Kamenicki, now, there nope. he goes. Very demonstrative on the mound. He thought it was within the strike zone with Gonzalez diving in. And these are the things he did in his last outing, which had Buck Showalter and Mark Connors upset. And he stands and glares down the umpire, and they don't care for that. Tough to get the next call after doing that. 2 2 the count. Two men on. And a fly ball hit deep down the left field line. And it's a foul ball. A little bit of frustration not getting the call on the two and one pitch, and so he hangs a breaking ball. You can tell by that body language right there. That was very upsetting to me. He's still upset. Oh, the count on Gonzalez at two and two. Cangelosi due to be next. One out, two men on. Rangers, as you know, got off to a terrible start at home. They're now 500 at home, 20 and 20. After starting five and thirteen here, that's Matt Noakes is changing the pattern. Palmer from second base had a chance to get a lot of pitches in that sequence, and a little tap. Noakes will have to go to Mattingly out there as the runners move up. So Gonzalez is retired. Two gone in the inning with minutes second and third. Let's go to New York now. Lisa Burkhardt is standing by. All right, thanks, Dwayne. At Shea, top of the eighth, Eric Anthony with a base hit to right off Anthony Young scores Craig Biggio for a 2-1 Astros lead. The game now in the bottom of the eighth. Back to Dwayne and Tony. All right, thanks, Lisa. Here in Arlington, the Yankees down by a couple. John Cangelosi prepares to bat for the first time in this game. Charlie A's in tight. Cangelosi with that speed. Left side. Matty Lee cheating a little bit also. And this one down around his feet. Ball one. Cangelosi hitting 188 with a homer and four runs batted in. He can really work the count though. A ball, no strikes. There's a strike one and one. Cangelosi inserted into the game in the top of the inning for defensive purposes. Made a fine running catch in left center field on a ball hit by Andy Stankiewicz. That had Kevin Reimer been out there, Reimer just didn't have the range 
to have gotten over there to make the catch. Talk about Cangelosi at 180, his on base percentage is 337. He's got 18 bases on balls. Yep. So he, he can start something or keep something going, plus he can pinch run, play defensively. Yeah, and for, He's a, for if you project those uh, walks out to a full season in terms of the number of at bats he'd have, he'd have 100 walks or so. He's only got 80 official at bats right now and 18 walks. One and two the count. And a base hit in the left. Palmer scores. Palmero's on his way to the plate. He will score. Cangelosi's out at second as Hayes goes back to Gallego. But Cangelosi, who made that great running catch in the top of the inning, drives in two runs in the bottom of the inning to make it a 4 nothing ball game. So Cangelosi will get credit for a single. He's out trying to move into second as this base hit drives in Palmer and Palmero. Kamenecki a little bit tired. His stuff was a little bit up that inning, and it shows in the two runs registered by the Rangers. And at the end of eight, 4 nothing Texas. Don't miss Neil Diamond's only New York area appearance at Madison Square Garden August 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 20th, and 21st. Tickets on sale now at the Garden Box Office and all Ticketmaster locations. Call 212-307-7171. Well, Nolan Ryan returns to the mound here to work the ninth inning, and he got a great standing ovation as he walk from the dugout to the mound to start the ninth inning. Roberto Kelly leads off. Fouls one back and out of play. Strike one. It's now a four to nothing ball game as a result of that base hit by Cangelosi. So the Yankees have a bigger hole than ever from which to extricate themselves. And he's staying with his fastball at least. The first pitch is an indication. And he's quickly out in front of Kelly. Nothing in two. Twelve strikeouts, only one walk tonight. Ryan has shut out the Yankees on two hits, has 61 career shutouts. A ball in two strikes. Roberto twice in this game. Still a lot of life in that fastball. Maybe not. Maybe not as much velocity pitch by pitch. But still terrific movement. What spots? An American League high 13 strikeouts for Ryan. And Don Mattingly fouls the first one back. Well, Andy Stankiewicz stands alone as the only hitter not to be struck out tonight by Nolan Ryan. Mattingly with a 15 game hitting streak. Hitting 371 for the life of that streak. 0 for 3 tonight. He struck out on a curveball back in the sixth. This one's top foul and out of play. Two strikes to count. Ryan trying to go the distance. The Yankees trying to get something started. They had the bases loaded in the third, left them that way. And that's really it. At one stretch, Ryan retired 13 in a row. He's retired 17 of the last 18 men to face him. And misses wide to Mattingly of all two strikes.
Heck, this is worth the entire 4th of July right here. Forget the fireworks. Ryan facing Mattingly at 45. Mattingly, fly ball to left. Cangelosi makes the catch. Two gone. Two outs in the ninth with the base is empty. There's the line on Ryan so far, and what a line it is. The 45-year-old right-hander. One walk, and that was to Mel Hall way back in the first inning. He also hit Gallego in the third with a breaking ball. Nolan took a little stroll on the mound before facing Danny Tartable. strike. He's got all this on. Everybody in the stands up on their feet now. His fans are all with Ryan. They were chanting his name in the seventh and eighth. Chanting his name again, waiting for him to come out to start the ninth. And here he is, two outs into the ninth. Carnival fouls one out of play. And the count is two strikes. And 30 pitches right now. Oh, two on Tartable. Ryan. Ready? Here it is. Tartable sends one deep to ride. Sierra back. That might go. Goodbye. An 0-2 pitch, and Danny Tartable hits one out. His eighth home run of the year, and that will deny Ryan the shutout. The third home run Ryan has given up this year. It comes on an 0-2 pitch. And most of Ryan's pitches in the eighth, and with the exception of just the one curveball to Roberto Kelly, the second strike, have been fastballs. And Danny Tarnable finally catches up to one of those fastballs. Well, the Yankees get a run and send Kevin Moss to the plate. Strike one. You almost get to the point with the way this guy's thrown, and the chances of seeing him are running out that you're pulling through the shutout. I mean, it almost seems strange. It really does. Well, you, you see it, you're seeing a marvel out there just a the one strike pitch one and one Ryan at 45 here it is now 89 degrees he's made over 130 pitches and just misses Tomas. Two balls and a strike. That's the other side of this marble. It's been over 90 degrees all night. He's 45 and has made over 130 pitches. Change and up. a popper. Short left. Cangelosi's there. And this one is over. Four to one final as Ryan gets his second win of the year and goes the distance for the second time. In the ninth for the Yankees, one run, one hit. And it's a final four to one. Nolan Ryan picks up the victory. What a captivating athlete, huh? Call him a performer entertainer. I mean, you've never seen a Pele play soccer. And if Gretzky play hockey, this guy pitching, and name all the great athletes other than any sport. And boy, the focus on this man for how many years now? And he just keeps continues to baffle people with his longevity and his dedication. And if they want to make a role model of an athlete, there's the one right there. Career win number 316. Ryan just missed. 
his 62nd shutout on that two out home run by Danny Tarnival. 4 1 the final. Ryan defeats Kamenicki. And this series is even at a game apiece. We'll be back in a moment. The Texas Rangers have beaten the Yankees tonight four to one on a very warm night in Arlington Texas and on the Jeep Eagle game summary for Texas four runs eight hits an error five left for the Yankees who run three hits no errors with five left Nolan Ryan goes the distance the first complete game victory for Ryan since June of 91 he's two and three Scott Kamenicki the losing pitcher one and six Danny Tartable hit his eighth home run of the year. 13 strikeouts tonight for Nolan Ryan. That's an American League single game high this year. As the 45 year old right hander goes the distance and wins his career victory number 316. There will be fireworks in Arlington following this one. Right now, we'll go to New York to the sports desk. Lisa Burkhardt is standing by. Thanks, Dwayne. Game two of tonight's doubleheader between the Mets and the Astros have proved, has proven to be a little bit more of a battle. The Astros now in front, 3-1. to one. In the bottom of the ninth, Eric Anthony drove in the go-ahead run in the eighth inning. Meanwhile, in game one, the Mets won that one 5-3. to three. Dwight Gooden got the victory to improve to 6-7 and seven on the year. Bobby Bonilla went two for three. Elsewhere in the National League today, it was Cincinnati over Pittsburgh, 5-2. Greg Swindell won his fifth straight as the Reds beat the Pirates for the third time in a row. Chicago loses to Atlanta 4-2 to tonight. St. Louis and San Francisco, no score in the top of the eighth. Philadelphia now in front of Los Angeles, 2-1 to one in the fifth. Eric Davis with his fifth home run of the season. Montreal and San Diego all tied up at one. Fred McGriff with his 17th homer. The most exciting game in the American League had to be the matchup between the Baltimore Orioles and the Minnesota Twins. The Twins coming from behind in the bottom of the 15th inning to win it 3-2. to two. Chili Davis drove in two runs to give Minnesota the victory. Elsewhere in the American League, it was Cleveland over Oakland 8-1. to one. The Twins now lead the A's by a game in the West. Toronto over California 8-6. The Jays were down 6-1 to one at one point. Boston was at Chicago. Boston beat Chicago 2-1. to one. Milwaukee and Kansas City postponed because of rain. Seattle at Detroit tonight. Seattle uh, wins it 4-3 to three in 10. We'll be back with more from the MSG Sports Desk right after this. Sports Desk is brought to you by Nobody Beats the Wiz Home Entertainment Centers. For everything in home electronics, music, and movies, Nobody Beats the Wiz. Tonight on our half-hour edition of the MSG Sports Desk, right after the post-game report, Mike Quick will check in on the New Jersey All-Stars. So we'll see you then. We'll send you back to the Yankees right after this word. We're back in Arlington, Texas. This current series even at a game apiece. The Yankees beaten tonight by the Texas Rangers. And Nolan Ryan, the final score, 4-1. to one. Well, there's not much to say other than that Nolan Ryan was simply overpowering tonight and pitched as well as we've seen him pitch in a long time. The adjective pool has run dry when you talk about <laughs> Nolan Ryan, but I can remember three pitches in this ball game when you do what he did to some pretty good hitters. Yeah, one that to Mel Hall. Ball to Mel Hall, a curveball to Roberto Kelly, and I thought a really big pitch when it was two to nothing Rangers. Mel Hall came up with a man on looking for something to pull. Nolan Ryan appeared to be losing a little bit of the real velocity in his fastball. A two and one pitch, a little sinker ball low and away to Mal that he'd off the end of the bat and line it to right field. But those three pitches stand out. And uh, the man is just an amazing, amazing person. And, and yeah. one of the nicest guys you'll ever want to meet. Yeah, he absolutely is. Tony, the Rangers obviously saw something tonight that they're looking for. They're on a 14 game homestand and they need every win they can get because they're going to spend a good part of the second half on the road. The Yankees tonight from Kamenicki. I thought uh, unfortunately gave up the hit to to Cangelosi and made it a four nothing ball game. But I thought they saw something from Kamenicki that might give them hope that perhaps the 28 year old right hander can contribute. Yeah he had control of his breaking ball through some good change ups early spotted his fastball lost his composure a little bit in the second inning and he obviously was tiring when the eighth inning rolled around when they got three hits and two runs but again that might have been the best learning experience for Kamenicki because he was tired and he had to really pitch even though he gave up a couple but yeah there were some promising signs I thought from Kami. Kamenicki 
hooked up against Nolan Ryan, and Ryan wins this one. The final is 4-1. to one. Texas over the Yankees. We'll pause for this. Back in Arlington, 4-1, to the Texas Rangers have beaten the Yankees. A reminder that Lisa Burkhart will be coming along with sports desk immediately following the conclusion of our postgame report. Meanwhile, the Yankees will take on the Texas Rangers again tomorrow evening. We'll be with you here at 7.30 on MSG before the Yankees return home. So this is just a short trip down to Arlington, home against the Minnesota Twins Monday's game on WPIX starting at 7.30. And then right back with us here on MSG Network Tuesday, starting with the Yankee scorecard at 7 and Wednesday night again against the Minnesota Twins. On MSG is the Yankees open that seven-game homestand, which will feature not only the Twins, but Seattle leading up to the All-Star break. So the Yankees, after beaten by this one 4-1, to one, now a game under 500, 39 and 40 on the year. Nolan Ryan strikes out 13, walked only one tonight, gave the Yankees their one run, a home run by Danny Tartable with two outs in the ninth. Back in a moment. All over in Arlington, Texas, the final score, the Rangers four and the Yankees one. Coming up next, the postgame report with Al Troutwick. We'll be with you again tomorrow evening when the Yankees again take on the Texas Rangers starting with Yankee scorecard at 730. New York Yankees baseball has been brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. By your neighborhood 7-Eleven. Oh, thank heaven for 7-Eleven. And by the 9X Yellow Pages. If it's out there, it's in here.